Once again, I am taking you on a trip to look at some of the best selling games for the Nintendo Game Boy 25 years ago. Welcome to March's edition of the Retro Gaming Chart Show, and this month we are focusing on Nintendo's beloved handheld, the Game Boy. The little grey brick that could had a massive library of games, and this month I'm taking you back to March of 1992, thanks to issue 124 of British-based multi-format mag, Computer and Video Games. So let's get cracking a look at the UK Top 10 Game Boy Games of March 1992. Atari's popular paper punting professional sim, Paperboy, made it to pretty much every single major console and computer in the late 80s and early 90s. And of course this doesn't exclude the original Game Boy in this pint sized port. To be honest, the tiny screen size and sluggish controls make this a pretty unplayable version of the game, but here it is at number 10 in the charts. It's been almost three years since the cinematic release of Tim Burton's gothic adaptation of The Cape Crusader, but the games based on the movies were massively popular for a very long time, as proven by Sunsoft's Game Boy rendition, here in the charts at number 9. It's not as awesome as the brilliant NES game, but it is a decent enough action platformer, with the tiniest Batman sprite you've ever seen. I'd buy that for a dollar! Actually, probably for quite a bit more. It's Robocop for the Game Boy. This game was okay for the time, but its real lasting legacy was its title screen music, which found itself in a British washing machine commercial. I kid you not. Seriously, look it up. Totally true. Honest. The port of NES Classic DuckTales was pretty much a carbon copy of Capcom's brilliant Disney license. Even with the smaller Game Boy screen, it looked and played almost exactly like its console counterpart and has lost nothing in the translation. Here is one of the better NES platformers out there in the palm of your hands. It's no wonder it's in the chart at number 7. We warned you. Remember the rules? You didn't listen. And so the cruel mutations known as the Gremlins make their way to the Game Boy, and for once it's a game not based on the NES version, unfortunately that also means it's not quite as good as the NES version either. As you can imagine you play as Gizmo, the feisty little furball with a multiplication problem. At an impressive number 6 in the chart, this underwhelming platformer appears to be popular this month. First in a series of crazy castle games, spanning 15 years and featuring a multitude of licensed characters, from the real Ghostbusters to Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle is at number 5, a side-scrolling action puzzler where the mischievous Lagomorph must escape by collecting every carrot in each level of the game. No idea how collecting carrots helps in any way whatsoever, but there you go. At number 4 is the debut of the Heroes in a Half Shell, the Teenage Mutant Knit, sorry I meant Hero Turtles, uh, bloody British censorship. Anyway this relatively early Game Boy release contains big chunky sprites, the ability to select any of the game's 5 levels from the get go and some pretty average gameplay. But it's Turtles so a high chart placement is pretty much assured. Number 3's entry holds the distinction of being a port of a Japanese only Famicom game, but also a game that was bundled with the Game Boy's 4 player Link Adapter. F1 Race is a pretty decent arcade style racer, and that bundled 4 player Link Adapter made for some excellent multiplayer action, so long as you could find yourself enough friends with Game Boys and their own copies of the game. Another game with arcade roots, number 2's entry is a tiny version of a legendary side-scrolling brawler, Double Dragon. The first few entries in this series were ever popular mainstays of the console realm, and this portable rendition is surprisingly decent, only missing the game's hilariously fun 2 player cooperative option, keeping the NES's lacklustre competitive 2 player mode. Ugh. As the hit single from Ambassadors of Funk says, there ain't no place like Super Mario Land, and that goes a little way in explaining why this game takes the top spot this month. Rather than try and make a carbon copy of one of the NES Mario releases, Super Mario Land lays its own path in this very surreal entry in the series. In playing to the console's strengths and weaknesses, Nintendo created a very playable portable platformer that takes the basic points of what made the original Super Mario great, but with enough changes to make this a far more unique title. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this and want more, you can click this icon to subscribe, this icon to support me financially via Patreon, or these icons to watch more videos from my channel. Why not take a few seconds to answer the question of the week in the comments, or just let me know what you thought of this video. See you next week.